All right. So let's finish up arithmetic of complex numbers. Last thing we have to talk about is division. So I'm looking at problem 32 of P5, and that's on page 49. Now, since I is a square root, dividing by 1 plus i is a lot like dividing 1 plus square root of 5. Both of these have square roots in the denominator. And at times, it's nice to be able to get the square root out of the denominator because your answer is going to be a much simpler result. So what you end up doing here is multiplying by what you call the conjugate of the denominator you multiply top and bottom by 1 minus square root 5. You change the sign on the square root. So 1 minus square root 5. And what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top to make sure you don't change the value of the fraction at all. And then doing the multiplication, distributing or foiling, however you want to put it, on top and bottom is going to leave you with a fraction whose denominator has no square roots. So to do division of complex numbers, it's the same thing. We have this idea of the conjugate of a complex number, where we change the sign on the square root, or in this case, on i. So instead of being the conjugate being 1 minus square root 5, it's going to be 1 minus i. You'll even see notation for uh, conjugation in the book denoted as a bar over the complex number. So in that notation, the conjugate of 1 plus i is 1 minus i. You know, that bar is just a conjugate. Change the sign on i. Conjugate of z. In any case, that's just kind of a sidebar. So we perform the multiplication here. That's going to be our next step. So I'm going to do it the way I like it, which is to distribute or foil this out. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times minus i is minus 2i. 3i times 1 is plus 3i. 3i times minus i is a minus 3i squared. And then in the denominator, I distribute this, or FOIL these two out. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus i is minus i. i times 1 is i, or plus i. And i times minus i is a minus i squared. Now, Remember that since i is square root of negative 1, i squared is negative 1. So this becomes 2. These two combine, minus 2i plus 3i. I just have 1i left. And then minus 3i squared becomes minus 3 times i squared is minus 1. And then this is over 1 and this is where the nice part comes in. Minus i plus i, these cancel. So all we're left with is the 1 and the minus i squared, and minus i squared is a minus 1, or a minus a minus 1, because of the minus out front there. So we got what we wanted. We got no i's in the denominator. That's exactly what we want. So we finish this off. Let's see. 2 plus i minus 3 minus 1 is a plus 5. 
divide this by 1 plus 1. So this is, keep this kind of boxed off here. So let's see, this is 2 plus 5 is 7. And then I have I, that's the complex number on top. And the complex number on bottom is just 2, or 2 plus 0 I. So now there's no I in the denominator. I can, if you will, distribute the 2, or dividing by 2, to both 7 and to the i. And I can write it as, when it's on the i, I can write it as, you know, i over 2 is just 1 half i. The other way you can think about this at is that dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. and then distributing that to get here. And this is how you divide two complex numbers. Now, this is the way the book is going to want your answer. Uh, personally, uh, when I'm grading everything, I don't really care. You can leave your answer like that. In fact, this is how I would write the answer. But the book's a real stickler, and when you look at the answers in the back of the book, this is what you're going to see. Things like A plus B I, you know, none of this fraction stuff, you know, like this, you know, fractions in something plus something I, and that's it, nothing else. Well, I've been showing you the way I prefer, which is generally just kind of the the general, I don't know what you'd call this, but you know, just doing everything out by hand rather than memorizing the formula. And as you may expect, there is a formula for dividing two complex numbers. And as you might expect, it is worse than the formula for multiplying two complex numbers. But if you like memorizing, that's fine. Oh book fell off. Sorry about that. That's fine. Here's what you're going to have to memorize. You're going to do A, C, plus B, D, all over C squared plus D squared. That's your real part. Your imaginary part is going to be AD minus BC all over C squared plus D squared. And that's the imaginary part, so it has to have an I attached to it. Now, if you look at this in terms of multiplying, if you prefer memorization, look at the formula for multiplying two complex numbers. And notice the similarities and differences between the two. See here, the real part contains an ACBD. In multiplication, it's a minus. In division, it's a plus. Next term contains an AD and a BC. In multiplication, it's plus. In division, it's minus. And in division, both are divided by C squared plus D squared. So in both, you're going to see AC, BD, then AD, BC. And the signs in between, they're both opposite. One is negative, one is positive. It's just, you know, which where the negative goes and where the positive goes is determined by whether it's multiplication or division. And the only other difference is that division has this divided by c squared plus d squared. All right, next up we should be looking at some examples of this.